Whether you operate one forklift or thousands, one location or hundreds, the new My Toyota customer portal can help you optimize your operation and material handling equipment. This one-stop, free-to-use platform is designed to help you take control of your information and make smarter decisions, all at the touch of a button. Register and access your data today at my.toyotaforklift.com. That's my.toyotaforklift.com. Hi, this is Matthew Wittemeyer from Inform, and you're listening to the New Warehouse Podcast. Today's safety tip is maintain situational awareness. With the increasing rate of automated hardware within the warehouse and the yard surrounding them, it's always important to maintain situational awareness, to know where those assets are, to maintain operational performance. With e-commerce off the charts, many small and growing warehouses are asking, how can I get ahead when my warehouse is barely keeping up? The answer is future-ready warehouse tech from Zebra Technologies. Warehouses can simplify and upgrade all processes, from automated inventory management to hands-free picking, with Zebra's tailored, scalable mobile solutions. They're simple and intuitive. There's never been a better time to upgrade for success with Zebra. How can your warehouse get ahead? The answer's in black and white. Get the answers at zebra.com slash the answer. That's zebra.com slash the answer. Businesses are retooling fulfillment operations from warehouses to omnichannel to meet new demand amid unprecedented labor shortages. 3PLs, retailers, B2B distributors, and others are turning to flexible fulfillment solutions like Six River Systems to adapt and scale. Six River Systems Fulfillment Execution System is an integrated solution that combines intelligent, cloud-based software and automation, including its autonomous mobile robot, AMR, Chuck. No costly or disruptive infrastructure changes, fast and easy associate training, and integrations with other warehouse execution solutions allow operations to meet labor challenges, increase efficiency, and enhance customer engagement. Go to www.sixriver.com to learn more. Go to www.sixriver.com to learn more. The New Warehouse Podcast, hosted by Kevin Lawton, is your source for insights and ideas from the distribution, transportation, and logistics industry. A new episode every Monday morning brings you the latest from industry experts and thought leaders. And now, here's Kevin. Hey, it's Kevin Lawton with the New Warehouse Podcast, bringing you a new episode today. On today's episode, I'm going to be joined by Matthew Wittemeyer. He is the Director of Marketing and Sales at Inform. Uh, and Inform is a software platform utilizing AI and machine learning to focus on workforce management. So we're going to get a little deeper into that and, and see what Inform is all about. We're going to talk a little bit about hybrid AI, what that means. And, and we're going to talk a little bit about how Inform can improve warehouse operations. And we're also going to talk a little bit about how their response was at, at the recent Modex show and, and what people were coming up to them in regards to challenges and, and how they're addressing those for people. So, Matthew, welcome to the show. How are you? Thanks, Kevin. I'm, I'm really well. Thanks for having me on the show. Yeah, absolutely. Definitely happy to have you on all the way from Germany, right? You're over in Germany and Inform, I think, is a German-based company as well. So why don't you tell us a little bit about Inform? You can inform us about Inform, I guess, and, and tell us a little bit about what it is that you guys do. Yeah, so Inform as a company is quite a varied company. There's a thousand mm -hmm. of us, nearly a thousand of us globally across oh, wow. okay. four regional offices. So we are headquartered out of Aachen, Germany, which is about an hour's drive west of Cologne, right on the mm. Dutch-Belgian border. And on a good day, I'm a few kilometers away from the Netherlands, which is quite important on a Sunday because everything oh, okay. in Germany closes and everything's open in the Netherlands. Oh, and our office is about a, a kilometer away from the Belgian border. And mm. So... Uh, we have offices in in Atlanta, Georgia, Sydney, Australia, and Santiago de Chile. Mm -hmm. So quite an international company, and, and there's a several other offices that are, are likely to pop up this year. Mm -hmm. um, that said, the vast majority of us are based in the Aachen campus, myself included, clearly not German, um, but you can tell that from my accent. <laughs> um, 
few bits about INFORM. INFORM was founded in, in 1969 to prove that this academic field of operations research, which is the distinct branch of mathematical science, mm -hmm. um, could be applied to improve business decision making. So mm -hmm. drive efficiency in business decision making. And we like to say the proof is in the pudding 53 years on. We've grown from a handful of individuals into a company of a thousand with 10 business divisions. We cover everything from optimization of aviation processes, banking, finance, hospital logistics, container terminal and distribution center logistics, which is mm. the division I work for. Mm. Realistically, if the word logistics is in, in your title, there is likely a, a series of algorithms that we've developed over the last 53 years that can improve business decision making in, in your field of work. And it's a large aspect of what we actually deal with. I guess the final point there to really hone in on is I, I use the word algorithms in form. Yeah. Started implying operations research, so math. Uh, with the advent of computers, we started writing computer software. Mm -hmm and building computer algorithms that can uh, mimic human behavior, mimic human thought processes. And in the early days, that was know-how driven AI is what we like to call it. And more mm -hmm. recently, we've, we've started applying more data driven AI tactics. Uh, so things like machine learning mm -hmm. um, and predictive analytics to enrich the algorithms that we use to take uh, decisions. Mm -hmm. Very interesting, and, and obviously you guys have, have grown quite a bit. As you're saying, you have about a thousand employees, and you know the. I think it's very critical, especially in um, today's environment in our logistics world, and we're seeing you know so much influx of technology and, and different things that are being automated and, and robotics and all different types of things coming into our world. Which and every time we're adding another layer, we're adding you know another thousands of data points and you know millions of data points and some aspects and depending on how big your operation is and you know i think all of that data is you know it's it's great to generate data right but what are we going to do with that data i think is the big question so so it sounds like you guys are addressing a part of that need where you're taking data and, and then helping to make those database decisions which i think is the the best way uh, to go about and if any of my students are listening i've been telling them we've been talking about data in class so i know uh they're going to say that i'm echoing uh, my point here but you know i think that you know data itself is such a such a powerful tool but you need to be able to to harness it with with a powerful tool to be able to do that so it sounds like informative is that so so talk to us a little bit about the the software itself and, and how does it actually work and, and do some of those predictive analytics and things that you were mentioning yeah thanks kevin i have to full heartedly agree with you that mm -hmm. technology uh, is the underlying uh, linchpin to the work that we do i mean right. we existed before Seth software I and mean, you know more in a consulting manner mm -hmm. but obviously since the advent of computers and technology form really started to grow decisively from that point forward because it's so much easier to apply the type of uh, decision support tools that we uh, have developed yeah. on top of a data foundation for me and in my division which is looking after container terminal and distribution center logistics we really have a essentially a three uh, pronged approach to how we look at improving decision making for our end customers the first is a foundation layer on data management so and making sure that you're collecting data and leveraging it and making it available for other subsystems to leverage for decision making uh, good clean data that can be leveraged uh, for improving decision making is, is the underlying foundation to really enriching your business's operational processes mm -hmm. On top of that, we've built essentially an operational system in some cases and in some cases not. But if we look at distribution centers and warehouses, yeah. we've got essentially an operational system that we surround uh, our optimization with. And an area that we really focus on is in the yards around warehouses okay. because it has a lot of carry across to other areas of specialty and other areas of experience, which is 
you know, maritime or intramodal container terminals. So really about the movement of containers. And that's broken into two of the other prongs. And then the first is really about understanding the past. Okay. And the best way for us to really in, in, get a rich understanding of the past is to use more modern data-driven AI techniques like machine learning mm -hmm. to look at a, a vast quantity of data points. You know, if, if we're looking at a, a distribution center, there's probably anywhere from 12 to 36 really rich data points that we can leverage okay. for improving decision-making in the now. And, and then that, of course, pivots to what we call optimizing the now. Mm -hmm. We're not predicting the future, uh, and we, we would never claim to predict the future in, in the software that we do, but we use operations research um, to and, and uh, a stream of algorithms called linear programming algorithms, which is our subset of operations research methodology to take incredibly complex decisions in real time. So you know, we're looking at dozens, sometimes, you know, between 40 and 100 variables, and we're weighing that against what the end customer's optimization goals are, and they vary from customer to customer. So those algorithms have to be coded in a way that they reflect the end customer's process, and we're taking a decision, as I said, in real time. So you know, basically a second. Yeah. Um, and, and that's that takes a lot of computing power, but it also takes a lot of efficiency in the algorithms. Mm -hmm. uh, if we look at today versus 1990, the mm -hmm. early 1990s, a planning problem that takes us a second to solve today, and that's what we roughly call real time, yeah. would have taken us 110 years to solve in 1990. We would still be waiting for the result. Wow. And and that's a byproduct of you know roughly a 2,500 time improvement in computing hardware power, yeah. so processor speed. But it's, it's predominantly a result of over a one point, I'm going to guess 1.74 million time. I think that's the right number. We can fact check that later. <laughs> but a 1.74 million time improvement in the in the efficiency of those algorithms that we use. Mm -hmm. If you look at a company like Inform, we have a very rich history of writing and developing those algorithms, which certainly sets us apart from our competitors who are largely startups you know, right. in today's day and age. Mm. Very interesting, and obviously, you know the the number there. I mean, from you know one second uh, decision to a hundred from one hundred and ten years to make that same decision. I mean, it's pretty pretty incredible. So obviously, you know what you guys have put together and what you've been able to, to develop over the years, as you mentioned, you know, developing algorithms and now being able to put that into a software itself that kind of overlays the other um, operational things that are going on and taking those data points and really helping to make those real-time decisions, as you mentioned, I mean, I think is a, is a huge thing. So, so there's obviously a lot going into making that happen. And the one thing you mentioned there, you mentioned something about clean data. So can you tell us a little bit about that? What does that really mean? And you know, if you don't have clean data, how can you kind of clean it up so you can utilize something like Inform? I think there's probably an entire day's workshop on answering how to clean up <laughs> data. So I might tackle the first half and then just give a, a generic next step. So sure. you know, clean data is really about, it's two parts for me. The first part is, is that the data is tidy. I'll give you an mm -hmm. example. You know, if we're looking at data around containers coming into and out of a yard, Right. surrounding your warehouse. I was looking at a data set yesterday with a customer and we had a lot of standard cube, 40 foot, 20 foot containers. We saw a lot of data points around high mm -hmm. load containers. Uh, and then there was sort of 20 or so entries that were not fitting any of the ISO standards for what a container should be, right? If we're looking mm -hmm. at international containers and that's what we call dirty data. Mm -hmm. um, so it should be one of, of the two. I mean, there's really only two right answers there. Uh, another example is if we look at, um, we were looking at whether containers were loaded or emptied. And that's a variable that should be set for every single container that's coming in and out of a facility. But there was something like a thousand records in the data set that didn't have anything. So an empty mm -hmm. string. And those sorts of things shouldn't technically be allowed to exist. Right. Uh, and they're the byproduct of, of one of typically two things. One, a software system that's poorly designed and allows those things to exist. Or two, a software system that's poorly designed and whilst it doesn't allow those things to exist, the humans have figured out a way 
to work around them to match the process that they're trying to achieve. And both of those things result in really dirty data. And the result, of course, is that it's really hard to mine that data for insights, mm -hmm. whether you're trying to sort of do basic KPI reporting or whether you're trying to do advanced machine learning uh, mm -hmm. that's built into a predictive algorithm. The result is really challenging. In terms of how to clean data up, the first logical point is to look at whether your end users are working around the software itself yeah. uh, with workarounds and because that's always going to result in poor data quality mm -hmm. and the second element is to you know routinely look at your data and see if there are anomalies in your data that don't make sense and mm -hmm. then isolate them figure out how they're occurring and, and have them resolved mm -hmm. ultimately you know a data scientist is going to be your best bet but we actually penned an, an entire series of papers, which was technically written for maritime container terminals, but equally mm -hmm. applicable to you know, distribution center operators on you know, the three major steps that you take to establish a healthy, robust data strategy, starting from just the basics of what it is through to how do you implement data science. And mm -hmm. we actually posit in that paper that going out and hiring a data scientist should be actually one of the last steps you take. Uh, because they're expensive and if you yeah. set them up for failure with things like dirty data that they mm -hmm. can't make sense of or a lack of industry knowledge you're, you're actually positioning yourself to fail in that project and ultimately believe that data science or mm -hmm. you know advanced data mining techniques are not going to be effective when it's probably the you know furthest thing from the truth we'll be back after a quick break you hear a lot about supply chains these days, because if the past couple years have taught us anything, it's that an efficient, well-managed supply chain is absolutely critical to keeping businesses successful and consumers happy. I'm Will Haywood, and I host a podcast called All Business, No Boundaries, where we talk about supply chains, how they work, what happens when they don't, and the innovations that are redefining what's possible in the world of logistics. Join me for insightful interviews with thought leaders and industry experts. We discuss how optimizing supply chains can break down the barriers that are holding businesses back. That's All Business, No Boundaries by DHL Supply Chain. Listen and subscribe wherever you get your podcasts. Hmm. Yeah, very interesting. And uh, obviously you're saying that, that word that's... Uh too often occurring is a workaround and I, I think that's something that's you know can be hurtful not only from just creating dirty data but you know straying from your your typical standard process and creating other issues within your operation too so so very interesting there and you know I think it's it's something that's very important especially as we start to advance in our, our industry and you know looking at logistics and and the things as we mentioned earlier in the show about technology coming into play you know that it's more and more important to have that that clean data as you mentioned so you can start to utilize things that are coming out and that are helping us to, to advance and help your operation perform better but like you said you know if you're not in a cleaning those that stuff up and, and doing the right things to ensure that you have the clean data it makes it difficult to to start to implement or even bring somebody in as you mentioned to do those types of things can yeah you know, i just want to add one other point sure. there that you know you in your initial question, you asked about, you know, the increasing prevalence of technology in mm -hmm. the supply chain industry. And we were just talking about processes as well and how technology doesn't always reflect the process that's being implemented and, and subsequently workers find a workaround, which results in, in unclean or, or dirty data. Um, there's a bigger element to digitalization so the implementation of technology to solve problems and and that's the transformation word which you know i heard last year is a dirty buzzword for the year that people don't want to talk about digital transformation <laughs> but i think it's something that we really need to take seriously right mm -hmm. if we're looking to implement I mean, we've got a saying here at, at inform that you know old process plus new technology equals expensive old process yeah you know technology is a tool it's not necessarily the solution in and of itself the reality is um, if we look at even you know a great example from modex you know mm -hmm. we're, we're talking about our yard management system at modex and the number of people that came up to me and said you know matt how do we 
how do we ensure that a trailer is parked in the yard where it's supposed to be parked? And I said, well, mm -hmm. there's two options. The first option is that when they check in at the gate, they're told to park it somewhere. Mm -hmm. And in a perfect world scenario, they park it somewhere that they're told to park it. And then I hear, oh, in the United States, you know, drivers don't park containers where they're told to park them. So we need to throw more technology at that problem. And I said, okay, well, the, the second option is you're looking at buying sensors or some sort of an IoT device that you put onto every trailer that comes into your yard. And it will feed us data about where all of those things are. Mm. But the reality is that's an old process and you're throwing probably best case scenario, a quarter million dollars, worst case scenario, a million dollars yeah. at a problem or a process that is very old and there are more elegant ways to solve that problem. You, know, mm. you think about it as a cost to the operator. Why not just charge the drivers a $50 penalty if mm. they don't put the trailer where they're supposed to instead of investing a half a million dollars into a technology solution that further complicates your tech stack mm. why not just change human behavior yeah. um, and and ultimately you're going to have to change human behavior in the end because any technology project is surrounded by you know the humans that utilize it so why not you just start with the simplest behavior to change uh, and you know you can argue carrot or stick i think the stick will work better in this scenario but it's a non-issue in other parts of the world. So clearly it's possible. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's an interesting point because, you know, there's those damn humans, you know, they're always messing stuff <laughs> up. Right. Uh, but, you know, I mean, to make technology work in all these things, I mean, especially, you know, you, you must mention Modex in there. I mean, we look at a lot of the solutions that are out there and things, even though, you know, there are, automated and you know things are, are improving to help us you know make better decisions faster real time as you mentioned you know it still requires the human element to, to make these things go and, and give the inputs that the systems need and, and things of that nature so so it's a good point you know looking at you know something and saying is it really you know something we need to invest in all this technology for or even older technology just to get something up to speed or is it is it do we just need to change the the behaviors of, of the people that we're that we're looking at so it's a it's a very interesting point there i, mean, I appreciate you putting that out there yeah i think there's a you know, as a follow on from that, I think that there is an interesting conversation to be had around iteration or innovation mm -hmm. in terms of what technology's role is in the logistics industries. You know, I was at an interesting conference in London about four weeks ago and we were having that debate and, and mm -hmm. we talked about the idea that most technology is iteration, um, that we're just iteratively trying to squeeze three, five, ten percent efficiency cost reduction however we want to label it to increase operational performance and and that's a large part of what we even do at inform but every once in a while there's technologies that come along that fundamentally change how yards as an example are sticking to distribution centers should work yeah. and if we look at you know automated hardware as a as a start and automation for me has two parts it has hardware and it has software but if we look at automated hardware you know, I spend a lot of time talking to the guys that, that are developing automated uh, shunting vehicles. Mm -hmm. And the reality is it is going to be an, a major innovation for the industry um, because the reality is you'll be able to operate those facilities 24-7 with minimal human uh, interaction. You'll be able to drive operational efficiency in ways that you haven't seen before. Mm -hmm. The cost reductions in terms of diesel costs, maintenance are substantial. And I'm not trying to pitch the hardware guys, yeah. but the reality is it's, it's one of those innovations, but with innovation comes rethinking processes. Mm. And you know, we look at a traditional yard, you've got an external truck that pulls in, they're told to go to a dock door, a storing position, and they drive into the terminal. All of that is likely going to need to change because mm. we look at the rich history of automation in maritime container terminals where they're effective and successful, they are very successful in terms of cost reduction and improved operational efficiency. But if you look at them in detail, they have an almost complete separation of human from the automated workspace. And that's to allow that those automated hardware devices to actually function the way they're supposed to. As soon as you mix a human into those environments, they become uh, very unreliable. The automated hardware, my safety tip, Mm -hmm. is designed to stop to protect human life. And that's the way it should be. But if you've got a human in there, it's going to slow the entire process down. Yeah. 
Yeah. And the result is that, again, I mean, we really need to th- rethink how yards are managed. You know, I'm a big proponent of the fact that there should be, you know, it's another solution to where did the driver put a container. Put a handover position just inside of your gate. The driver parks there, disconnects, mm-hmm. goes outside of the facility. So they're not interacting with robotic equipment. Uh, they're not putting containers where they're not supposed to be. And those those automated tugs are able to do all of your internal shuffles because they're significantly more efficient than a human operated one, right? But we need an openness and a willingness to see that innovation comes with process change and an openness in sort of seeing that those processes can evolve. It doesn't always have to be the way it's always been. Mm. Yeah, it's a very interesting perspective there because I think a lot of times we're looking at technology and seeing, you know, how can I drop this technology into my existing process, right? I think what you're saying there is, you know, if we want to bring in technology, you know, to get the full optimization of it, you know, we might have to shift our process in a little different way and think about things in a a different way than than how we've been doing it, which I think think makes total sense because even you're an example there in the, the yard, you know, you're having this handoff spot as I think you called it, you know, you're able to, to just totally reduce any additional human uh, interaction there or, or human kind of improvisation, I guess, in a sense, right? Whereas, you know, maybe one driver thinks, uh, drop it over here, and then another driver thinks, oh, I'll drop it over there. And, you know, then all of a sudden you have your, your technology in place, but the, the automation gets confused right where am i supposed to get it from here or there or maybe they're only just programmed to get it from here and not there now someone needs to come in again and move that trailer again so so a very interesting point there and I, I think you know as we look at all this technology that is kind of surrounding us and and coming into every aspect of, of the operation and, and the operational flow and, and the supply chain itself you look and it's almost every Every point, I think, in the, the chain there is is getting automated or, or bringing some type of technology in place. So so we need to look at how do we make all these things kind of work together. And if we need to adjust processes to, to do that and be as efficient as possible, I think that's a, a really key point there that you, that you made. So so very interesting. So so I'm curious along those lines, you know, we did uh, Modex last week uh, as we were recording this. It was last week. Yeah, it feels... It already feels like a long time ago, but it was, it was a lot of things going on there. I think, you know, the attendance I saw was like kind of like record numbers, 37,000 people or something there. So, so you guys had a booth there, so I'm sure you had a, a lot of traffic. So, you know, what kind of challenges were attendees coming to your booth with and, and how are you guys kind of addressing those with Inform? Yeah, so I guess I start with a really brief sales pitch. And I like to make people aware when I'm talking about my product because it's not what I love to do. So, you know, Inform in the distribution center space markets and sells a yard management system. And at a base level, our yard management system isn't drastically different from any other yard management system on the market. We're providing a software tool that digitalizes what is otherwise a manual or or perhaps an Excel spreadsheet driven process. Mm -hmm. And we saw a lot of inquiry uh, across the four days of Modex with people that are doing manual processes or again at best a spreadsheet driven process. Lots of radio communication, a lot of people running around yards trying to find containers. There's a huge amount of inefficiency in that and, and a basic digitalization tool, so a software tool that doesn't do any sort of advanced thinking, can already offer quite a bit of uh, quite a bit of you know transparency, um, data quality enhancements that you can start basing future decisions on. A lot of advances there. Um, where I think we differ greatly from our competitors in that space, and where most of the very interesting conversations I had is that Inform again as a, as a software company was founded around the principle of optimizing business decision making. So the second step of our YMS is to take that data layer that we create through the software uh, and implement optimization on top of it. And there's a lot of things that relate back to earlier conversations that are really important for us to consider, like processes and how they evolve. I give you an example. You know, our, 
our vehicle optimizer that's that's built inside of the YMS can essentially reduce an end user shunting operations. It can reduce the total number of drivers by up to 40% or, or, or let's say assets, not necessarily just drivers. Mm. And that can be looked at in, in two ways. You can say, well, that's 40% cost savings or that's you know 40% more throughput that we can throw through the facility in Europe where we have a really hard time finding skilled drivers to do shunting operations in distribution centers. It's, it's looked at instead of needing five drivers to complete my daily operations, I only need three. And that's a operational risk mitigation tool because you don't need nearly as many skilled drivers. There's a lot of ways of looking at what the value is behind that. It's not just simply reduction of headcount which is certainly a possibility, but it's it's not one of our primary drivers. Mm. You know, the, and, then, and then the final layer that we add on top of that is automation. I said earlier that for me, automation is a two, two sort of elements. There's the hardware and the software. So our AI empowered system has the ability to take between 90 and 95, 98% of the daily decision-making around yard management and automate it. Mm. So that way, instead of a human taking all of those decisions day in and day out, or a team of humans, you talk to a lot of people at Modex that have two, three, four dispatchers sitting in a room, right. you know, communicating via radio. We digitalize all of those processes, and then the computer AI algorithm can take over. Most of those decisions are very routine, where the system comes up with an error, maybe something's wrong in the data, maybe there's something outside of the process's operational norm, and it flags it for a human uh, intervention. But the reality is, you know, today out of the box, we can automate, like I said, 90 to 98% of the decision making around yard management. Mm. Of course, that comes back to the earlier conversation around process improvement, right? If we're, let's say we're automating the dispatch of transport orders to shunting drivers. The reality is they need to do what the computer is telling them to do opposed to what they want to do. And if you look at most operations today, they get a clipboard with all the moves that they know need to happen, or they you know, get an, a list of things that need to happen over a, a CB radio, mm -hmm. and they're used to being able to take decisions on their own. If you implement a streamlined system like ours, of course, it could be implemented that way. But the reality is if you really want the strong cost drivers and efficiency gains, you need to be willing to have your drivers, as an example, change the way they work and work with next best move. We've seen a high level of success in Europe uh, where we've had the software running for about 20 years now. Yeah. Uh, and of course, Modex was our launch into the North American market. Uh, and we expect to see you know, the similar level of high level of results in the US market for operators who are willing to reconsider their processes for those operational gains. Hmm. Yeah, very interesting. And I think the the way that you've kind of developed this the software and, you know, it's resulting from, you know, initial, as you said, initial consulting and, you know, actually, you know, doing these, these mathematical things and, and then now inputting those algorithms into the software platform itself and being able to to tailor that and utilize that in, in different operations and specifically to the operations itself, I think is a really important thing because we all have, even though, you know, we love to standardize, you know, we all have different variations in our business. So, so the fact that you're able to, to accommodate and, and adjust to different variations in, in businesses, I think is really a key to be able to pivot like that. So, so the fact that you're launching now in North America and you know, you've had success for, for 20 years, as you mentioned in Europe, I'm sure it's going to be a great success in North America too. And, and people will be very interested to start utilizing and, and uh, optimizing their yard in a, in a better way, especially as, you know, containers are such a hot topic here in the states especially I and mean, we see all these congestion and, and things of that nature so you know it's certainly something to to keep on top of your uh, mind and and be able to be more efficient in that area getting you know containers moved around to where they need to be unloaded and then obviously back out to back out the yard and, and back to the port so they can get 
filled up again with all the other back orders that we're waiting on, right? So, so very interesting stuff from you, Matthew, and it was great to learn about Inform and, and hear some of your, your perspectives as well around technology and, and how do we really implement technology in a, in a smart and a efficient way and, and get the best optimization as possible. So if people are interested in learning more about Inform, how can they do that? Yeah, so <clears throat> I'm always happy to take a phone call, uh, and I, I'm probably going to regret this, but uh, you can call me on my U.S. <laughs> number, uh, 678-820-7242. Again, that's 678-820-7242. I'm a little bit old school. I like talking to people. I don't know if you've caught that out of this mm-hmm. interview. But you can also visit our website as well. So it's inform-software.com forward slash distribution centers. Uh, and that should take you to the uh, specific page where we talk about what we're doing in and around warehouses. All right, great. And we'll put all the information at the newwarehouse.com as well. So everybody can call and text Matthew if they want and talk to him all day long. So Matthew, thank you so much for joining me on the show. And it was great to talk to you. You've been listening to the new warehouse podcast with Kevin Lawton. Subscribe and check us out online at the newwarehouse.com. Thank you for listening to this episode. If you want more content from The New Warehouse, check out our new video series called All Hands on LinkedIn. Just search for The New Warehouse on LinkedIn and follow along.